You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G, which means it's perfectly safe for folks and families of all ages. Yes, even Grandma. Enjoy. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by drfloyd.com. "'Twas the night before learning day, and all through the ship, Dr. Floyd was in the middle of a long, strange trip. He had said learning was humbug, something he didn't need, and he whined and he moaned when Dr. Grant disagreed. The ghost of Dr. Doug visited him that night and told him that he thought it just wasn't right. Dr. Doug warned of a visit by three spooky spirits, but Dr. Floyd said humbug and didn't want to hear it. But then came the ghost of learning day past, and Dr. Floyd began to believe in spirits real fast. The trip with the spirit of past was now done, but as we joined Dr. Floyd, the clock has struck one." The sound of the clock striking wakes Dr. Floyd, who sits up in bed, thoroughly annoyed. Hey, it's one o'clock. Hmm, doesn't seem to be a spirit here. I knew it was all fooey. As Dr. Floyd settles back down and nestles into his bed, he doesn't notice the ghost with a wreath on his head. Okay, okay, knock off the rhyming. It's too corny. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Dr. Floyd doesn't notice the ghost lying in bed next to him, dressed in a red robe, fit for a king, with a beautiful wreath of holly around his head. Hmm, my nice warm bed. I love this bed. Why, yes, it is rather comfortable. Yes, I just wish I had another pillow. Here you go. Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. Well, don't mention it. Good night. Good night. Ah! Dr. Floyd runs screaming from his bed and dives into his closet, slamming the door behind him. Who are you? I am the ghost of learning present. Come out and know me better, man. Timidly, Dr. Floyd creeps out of the closet towards the spirit who is sitting on the edge of the bed, looking all around the room. Well, where are they? Where are what? The cookies. Dr. Doug said there would be cookies. Oh, well, I was only being sarcastic when I said that. Oh, eh, well, never mind then, I guess. Uh, she was looking forward to those cookies. I'm sorry. Well, let it not trouble you a minute longer. A mere trifle like cookies shouldn't bother the world's most brilliant scientist, Dr. Floyd. Nay, not a worry for a man man who knows so much, he couldn't possibly learn any more. It's true. I'm done with learning. I've learned all there is to learn, and by the way, where is it? Where is what, man? The present. You said you were the ghost of learning present. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You are worse off than I thought. What? I am the ghost of learning present. You know, not like the future or the past, but the present. Oh, Floyd, how sad your life must be. To know everything and not have that thirst to continue learning. Why, it's just about the saddest thing I can think of. Well, I guess what you you don't know won't hurt you then, eh? <laughs> you done? Uh, yes, well, uh, let's not waste a moment longer. Let us be on our way. Hold fast to my robe, Floyd, and don't let go. But the Floyd grasps the spirit's robe, and the moment his grip is firm, the room fades away, and the duo is flying through the time and space stream. Spirit, I'm afraid I'm gonna fall! Fear not, Floyd. As long as your hold on my robe falters not, you shall be safe. After flying for a few moments, Dr. Floyd can see a small black speck floating far off in front of them. It is not until they are right up next to it that Dr. Floyd realizes that it's the ship of the evil mastermind, Dr. Steve. Spirit, why have you brought me here? This is the ship of my arch nemesis, Dr. Steve, and his sock-shaped assistant, Fitcher. This I know, and tis why I brought you. But he'll see me in my dressing gown and slippers. It's embarrassing. They have little poo bears on them. Nay, they will see you not, for at this moment you are like me, but a spirit. They will not be able to see nor hear you. The spirit flies directly towards the ship, never stopping. Dr. Floyd closes his eyes as they approach the hull of the ship at high speed, and when he opens them again, they are inside the ship's galley. A fire is burning inside the fireplace, and Fitcher, Dr. Steve's sock-shaped assistant, is bustling around, preparing a large feast. Dr. Steve busts into the room, struggling with a large banner. He finally gets one end secured over the doorway, and as it unfurls, Dr. Floyd reads, Happy Learning Day? You mean to tell me Dr. Steve celebrates Learning Day? Of course he does. Why? I always thought he's against learning. <laughs> well, then you see, there is more for you to learn. There, Fidget, how does it look? I wish I were there. Well, I... I can't help it if one of my legs is two inches shorter than the other. It's just going to have to stay crooked. How is dinner coming along? <laughs> oh, I can hardly wait. Oh, Fidget, this will be the best learning day yet. I have a bunch of learning activities planned for after our meal, but let's open our presents now. Okay, my Here, this is for you. <laughs> Well, yes, it's a compass and a slide rule to help you plan our pass through the time and space stream. <laughs> well, you're welcome, and you won't even hardly miss the payments for them coming out of your paycheck. <laughs> well, you didn't think I was going to pay for them, did you? But enough about your gift. Let's open mine. <laughs> Why, Fidget, it's a set of encyclopedias. Wherever did you get these? 
time. Really? You found them just floating out in the time and space tree? Hey, those look like my encyclopedias, but they can't be, can they? Oh, uh, uh no, 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 I, I am sure they aren't. <laughs> well, they are a little old and seem to be covered in time and space goo, but, but this is the perfect gift. I can practically open to any page in any volume and find a historical fact that I can parlay into an evil plan. See, I knew he didn't like learning. No, Floyd, you failed to see that even in his own twisted way, Dr. Steve is learning new things. He learned about the Dewey Defeats Truman newspapers and tried to steal them. He learned about Molly Pitcher's pitcher and decided to try and steal that. Well, I guess you're right. And if you stop learning because you know everything already, and he continues learning, well, uh, what will happen then? Dr. Steve would eventually become smarter than me. No, no, it's not possible, is it? That is for the future to decide. For now, hold tight to my rope. There is one more place I need to show you. What's wrong? Could you hold on to the robe right here at the pocket? You gave me a widget last time you grabbed it in the back there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Glancing once more at the evil Dr. Steve devouring information from the encyclopedias, Dr. Floyd then grabs the spirit's robe. Instantly, they are back out in the time and space stream, racing back towards Dr. Floyd's ship. They then enter the ship through the hole, and Dr. Floyd finds himself in the cargo hole. Why are we here, spirit? We're here because your crew is determined to not allow your distaste for learning to prevent them from celebrating this special day. Just then, a raucous laugh comes up from one of the corners of the cargo <laughs> hole. For the first time, Dr. Floyd notices a bright light coming from there. He creeps over to find a small fire lit and sitting around it are Dr. Grant, Chips, and the rest of the ship's crew. Flight Attendant Christie and Ensign Temporary, the ship's red-shirted expendable crewman. Okay, everyone, how about a toast to the man who's inspired learning in all of us, Dr. Floyd. But Dr. Grant, doesn't Dr. Floyd think that learning is humbug? Yeah, he seems to think that way now, Flight Attendant Christie, and it's really sad. But he's still the reason I became a doctor, so I still wish him all the best. I guess that makes sense. To Dr. Floyd. To, to Floyd, Floyd, sir! <laughs> you okay, Chips? <laughs> For the first time, Dr. Floyd notices that Chips is wrapped in a small shawl in front of the fire. He also notices that he's clutching a small crutch, even though he just sort of always floats around everywhere. Requesting permission to ask a question, please, sir. Tim, how many times have I told you that you can just ask the question? You're off duty. So, it's okay to ask then? <sighs> yes, permission granted. Sorry, sir. I'm just wondering how Chips is feeling, sir. Well, he's doing okay, I guess. He got a really nasty virus this evening. I did some research on it, and I can't find out anything about it. <coughs> well, I see you, Chips. It's some sort of new virus. The only one who'd be able to figure out how to crack it would be Dr. Floyd, but he's so set against learning anything new, I just don't know. Hopefully it'll clear up in a few days. Spirit, please, tell me if Chips will live. I see a vacant seat on the bridge and a shawl and crutch without an owner. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the robot will die, or terminate, or stop functioning, whatever it is that robots do. No, Spirit, no! Tell me Chips will be spared! But Floyd, you have learned all you want to. You have no time to learn about a new virus that threatens your little friend. No, no, no! Say it isn't so! The scene around Dr. Floyd vanishes and he finds himself alone back in his bed. Tears in his eyes. No! No! Oh, wait! I'm back! It was all just a dream again! Even though I've been visited by several ghosts now, and even though they all seemed real, I just refuse to believe it. Oh well, now I can just go back to sleep and not worry about learning anymore. Learning. Huh. Humbug, I say. <sighs> I love my bed. And so, dear listener, Dr. Floyd has once again got the idea that learning is humbug deep into his brain. He nestled himself down into his bed, and on his pillow rested his really small... Hey! I thought I said no more rhyming. Uh, sorry. Dr. Floyd is still one more visit to go. Will Dr. Floyd's feelings about learning change? What horrors could the ghost of learning future possibly hold for our hero? Will this ghost be mad that there are no cookies? Find out next week on the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd! The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.